Hi everyone. Hi, uh, sorry to interrupt you as you talk and eat your pizza, but we'll get started a bit behind schedule. So first up tonight is Dan's going to talk about building CRUD applications in Clojure. Hello. <coughs> okay. So basically I'm going to talk about how to put together a very kind of simple CRUD application, um, kind of DIY from scratch, because there isn't really anything kind of out of the box. There's a bunch of tools to make it easier, but there, there isn't really anything yet. So I just want to explore how hard is it to do it from scratch. I will keep that away from the laptop. <laughs> right. So first, when I looked at kind of how, how do you put together um, basic code applications, what do I need? And these are kind of the basic things that make up uh, a simple web application. Um, so it's going, I'm going to look at kind of each of them and how they fit together. And so, oops. Um, so that there are some common libraries that, that you might see in Clojure to, to do um, these different things. I see my formatting is a bit off. <laughs> oh well. Um, so I kind of picked a few uh, libraries that I, I, I know or I like. Um, to do each of these, I'm going to show how to put them together, and I'll explain why I picked the ones I did. A ring I picked because it's what everybody uses, so there's there's no point going against the grain there. Um, Bidi or Bidi is a, it's a routing library by Juxt. It's really cool because the roots are all pure data structure. It's it's not like um, the other co common uh, routing libraries out there, like Composure. They make use heavy use of functions and macros. Um, but the roots in, in Biddy are all just data structures, so you can store them somewhere, you can pull them from a database if you really want it, or you can compose them really easily. Um, they're also reversible, so you can turn a URL into um, like a, a root or a handler, but you can go the other way around as well. Um, if you know what handler um, is, is uh, handling your, your whatever resource, you can get the URL from that. And it works both in Clojure and Clojure Script, which is really useful. <coughs> um, SQL is uh, it, it's, it's, it's a SQL library where you write all your SQL in SQL rather than in something else. Um, a, a lot of libraries out there seem to uh, not like the DSL that exists for querying, so they make up another one on top, but uh, SQL doesn't. It also works with JBC, JDBC, which means it works with pretty much all SQL databases out there. And this is a library I made myself, so I'm using it because I wrote it. Um, but its main selling point is that the template manipulation is all data as well. So it's, it's very much based on NLive and similar libraries where you have your HTML and then you, uh, <coughs> you use uh, CSS style selectors to say which bits of the HTML you want to put where and duplicate and so on. Um, but they all use kind of functions to do that, and, and this one just use, uses more data structures. Um, but I'll show you some code later on. Uh, so, yeah, that looks a bit weird. It's the resolution. Is there a way of fixing it, or? Just go, just press it down and it should. All right, okay, we'll just. Oh, great off the page. Um, <coughs> yeah, all right, well, okay. <laughs> we'll make do. Um, so this is just setting up the project in case anyone's following along, I don't, probably not. <laughs> um, okay. <sighs> See, I, I had some technical difficulties this morning where I think I have the correct file on my memory stick which did not work for some reason. And the emailed file, I think, was messed up. Um, all right, well, well, we'll make do. Um, it, it can be. I, it's not, well, it, I have a, um, I think I have a PowerPoint file, but not PDF, possibly. Or I should have a PDF on the memory stick if that works for you. Just put the slides on later. Yeah, I'll just keep going. Um, we'll miss the bottom of them, but whatever. So all, all I did below there was set up a ring handler with 
Billy, and it's really easy. The code is actually, the code is online as well. It's at that URL, so you can run it all um, from there. <coughs> um, but I, I'll put up the proper slides tonight or tomorrow. Right, so the first thing we do is we set up a few routes in, in so this is what routes in Billy look like. It's just a data structure um, where vectors just mean kind of a sequence of like subroutes, I guess, and maps map from like if you hit items, then this this thing here will decide what handler. So depending on then on the request method, it will either call one of those two functions. Um, <coughs> so I just set up a few for you're know, reading some items, creating them, whatever, updating them. Um, this one here, I added purely because uh, I wanted to be able to test it from the browser through forms if you were doing a proper API. You wouldn't need that. <coughs> okay. Um, so th th that's basically the route. So there's items uh, to get a list of all the items in my app, and I can do item and the ID to get a specific item or update a specific one. Which? Yeah, so if, if it's a vector, it means that it's, you know, item followed by whatever, and it, because that's a map, it knows to um, put, put that in as a, as a parameter. Um, the maps mean that, yeah, or it's either one or the other or the other. So in this case, it's items <laughs> or item followed by an item ID. Um, you, you can do a few other things. There's, there's quite a few options. You'd have to look at the documentation for that. But the basic structure is quite easy, quite simple. It does mean that if you have more routes that you want to add in to the status structure, you can just add them, merge them into that map. So that's, yeah, it's very composable in that, in that way. So that's why it's a nice routing library. Um, yeah. <clears throat> so then there's my uh, SQL statement. Um, this is just in a file that I call queries at SQL, and yes, QL will load that and turn it into a function for me. So that's the first one I'm going to use. It just gets everything, but only does. Um, and <coughs> that's th this this command here tur reads that file and turns all the statements, all the queries into functions. So I can just call this as that function name. Um, and the DB spec is just some using SQLite for it. Um, it's just a JDBC DB spec. Um, I just created the database and added a few items in for testing. And then I'm going to move on to the template. So at the moment, we're, we're looking at the uh, We're looking at this route here, read items. <coughs> so my template is written in Hiccup, which is a data structure that basically represents HTML. Um, as you can see, it looks, it looks very much like HTML. Um, Table.items means that it has a class called items. Um, I think it's pretty straightforward. No, sorry, any questions? Um, so that's, that's the template itself. So you can see there's no logic in there. It's just a bunch of markup. And then I have a transformations map, which takes in something that kind of looks like a CSS selector. And on the other side, it has um, some data explaining what it should do with that. So it, it's very similar to how NLive works. Only if this were NLive, you would have function calls <coughs> over here and a bunch of logic. So. What I did with my template system is just separate the actual functions that get called from the definition of what you want transformed. So, and then you, yeah, I'm gonna explain this properly in a moment, but I'll just continue on. So you compile them together, um, you, you combine the template with the transformations and it returns a render function. So this is now a function and you pass into it all the options that get transform into the uh, into the template 
Um, and then the actual handler function read items looks like this. I'm going to step through it now. So first we call get all items, which is the SQL functions function to uh, run, run our query. Um, it outputs something like that for my test data. So it's a sequence of maps where each map is the uh, is the row in the database, um, and those are the three columns I selected. <laughs> Then I'm mapping over it so that I can add in a URL field. Um, and the URL field is just derived by putting in the ID after item. Um, items now looks like that. And the reason I do that is because my templates don't have logic, so I can't combine the string with the, uh, with the ID easily. So I just do uh, it like before passing it to my template. Um, and then I just put that into another map with an items field, so it looks like this. Um, and then this is the compiled template, which is a function that takes in a map and returns hiccup. So that will take this data and this template, and it will So you can see that it has, it has added in the different fields into like where it has the ID. Now you can see that it turned um, it turned the classes from TD doc whatever into this structure. Both are valid, but to make my uh, templating language work properly, it normalizes them to this first. So all the output will always look like this, but both options are valid. Um, so it has duplicated TR for all of my data and it has filled in these. I'll show you that in more detail in a moment. And then HTML is just a hiccup function to turn hiccup into HTML. And that looks like that. <coughs> and normally you would use ring middleware to do all this, to, to turn re your results into, into responses, but to keep it lean and simple I didn't, so I'm just returning status 200 in the body. Um, and there it is when you when you run it um, it looks like that for my test items um, so this is the original template I had so now very briefly talk about uh, Aeronaut templating so Aeronaut is a, is a kind of project I started for myself a while ago which was kind of my wish list of stuff that I wish I had while I was, when I was working with Clojure Web Development. So it's kind of an umbrella thing for a lot of things I've been tinkering with and template is kind of the first one I've got into a usable form. Um, so here's the, the input hiccup again. And phew, I that could not be very awkward to explain. <laughs> so this is my transformation, it's part of a map, so it maps the selector to the action. So the selector says it's, it's just, um, it's almost, uh, almost CSS selectors, only their keywords. So that selects, oh, my arrow is wrong, that selects this, all, all the red stuff, and it applies clone for to it, and what clone for does is it clones the content of the um, selected uh, HTML or hiccup. So it's the content of the table because it selected the table. It's a little bit confusing, but there's technical reasons for it. And we'll probably fix it at some point, but for now. So it clones the content of table for everything in my parameter, in, in the map that I passed into my render function, keyed by items. So I only had items, so it's a sequence. So what it does is it <coughs> duplicates this for everything in my item sequence. <coughs> so there's the data. Um, so it has, it has three entries. Then the next, um, the next transformation was dot items dot id. So because it, it 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 detects that it's nested inside my previous transformation. It detects the, the, the child relationship in the nesting. So it now knows to apply this for every duplicated version of this. So content just means that the content section of the tag gets filled in with whatever it finds at ID, which in this case is one. 
and it inserts the one in, in here as the content of that node. And that's basically it. That's, that's basically what my template library does. Um, but I went a little step forward because every time someone asked me, oh, what's your favorite closure templating system, which clearly now is this, but before was, was NLive. Um, and, and I talked about how in NLive you write your HTML and <laughs> you, you select pieces of it and you duplicate them or you modify them. Um, but you do that in code. The, the template itself is just pure markup. And the reaction I usually get, especially on Hacker News, is, oh, that's really cool, but don't now all your designers have to know the structure so that your code will match up and uh, the selectors do what they're supposed to? I don't know, I didn't have the problem, but then I never worked in big teams with lots of designers and programmers arguing over how, what the structure should be. So I didn't really feel the pain. But I fixed it anyway. Um, I made a companion library called Template Style Sheets, which turns this into something that looks very much like CSS, which the designers can write now for, for me. Or at least they can update the selectors, at least. So that was a, an evening's work last week. <laughs> um, it works quite well. It's not quite finished, though. There's one issue I think I have to fix, but. By the weekend, that will be on Clojars, in case anyone cares to play with it. Um, so th I think that solves their issue. Um, so that, that kind of, that's all the steps for setting up routes, um, database query, and templating to, to, get, to, to do kind of one part of a CRUD app, which in this case is listing all the items in, in my database. Um, so I'm going to go quickly through the leading as well. Um, it's, it's, it's quite straightforward. It's just all the same again. Um, in this case, the query uh, is different because it's a delete. Um, YesQL requires that you put an exclamation mark after anything that isn't uh, select so that it knows um, which JDBC function to use because there's a difference between queries and commands. So that but it fits quite nicely to naming and closure anyway. Um, so the lead item, it just deletes the item with the ID that I said. The, so the, I already had the root way back. So this time we're looking at this root here. Well, either one. Um, I'm using the post so that I can post it from a web form. Um, I guess because I'm just showing it on a PDF, it doesn't really matter. But anyway, um, if you're doing an API, you wouldn't need to post the REST API. <laughs> um, so there's a few new things in this handler, and it's this this time I'm actually looking at the request object. So anyone who's or request map. Anyone who's familiar with uh, Ring knows that the handler functions take in a request uh, map and they return a response map. So last time I didn't need to use the request map because I was just returning everything. But this time I'm getting the item ID out. Um, Biddy puts the parameters from the URL into root params, but it also merges them into another key called params with, all the other, with, with every other parameter. But I'm using root params to make it clear that that ID comes from the root and not from query strings or somewhere else. So, so the, the, there's the, the URL we're looking at is slash items and then the ID, which matches up with you know, item ID. Um, <laughs> so then we're calling the lead item, which is the SQL function, and it deletes it. And then we're just retur I'm, I'm returning a status 302 to redirect you back to because this, this URL was item, um, and I just redirected it back to items so that it can reload the page and show you the new list of items after deleting. So there's not an awful lot of code for doing simple things if you just want to get, update, whatever, delete some things. So doing basic CRUD stuff from scratch. Now, obviously, I've glossed over things like authentication and security, but the basic um, the, the, the basic code is quite, quite
quite straightforward and it wouldn't take an awful lot to advance it. Um, I'm not showing you how to do all the other routes that I set up, but I will update the code that's on GitHub to do all that so you can see the full application um, later. So, what libraries um, clo does Clojure actually have to make this easier? The obvious one is Liberator, which is um, a library for, I guess, writing resources for kind of REST APIs. It's, um, it's a web machine based kind of libraries, uh, Erlang, I think it's web machines, Erlang. Um, it, it has a flow chart where it has decision points where, and conditions where you can decide kind of what response should come out depending on kind of the parameters and various different setups of authentication. And it lets you return kind of the, the correct response codes and the, the correct errors depending on what's going on. So if you want to be RFC compliant, it's brilliant. I find it's very flexible, it's very powerful, but I find it's a little bit too low level. Um, when I'm thinking about resources, I'm, I'm kind of like REST resources, I'm thinking on a different level, and having to think about all the different condition points is quite, um, well, it's, it's, not, it's not a huge deal, but it's not really the level I want to be working at when I'm writing kind of REST APIs. But it is really cool and really powerful. Um, <laughs> Juxt have a new library that's not quite released yet. It's kind of pre-beta, I think. Um, it's usable, I've played around with it, it works, but it, it does have some issues. But it's, it's basically their Liberator competitor. It isn't quite as pedantic about all the different RFC things. Therefore, it's a lot easier to use. It's a higher level. But if you want to be 100% compliant with all the different error codes and RFCs, it maybe doesn't, uh, it might, might be more work. But one of the cool features it has is it has built-in Swagger support. If you want Swagger to document your API, it's very easy to make out of um, create that for you. And finally, because one of the uh, things to, that, I, that I was trying to achieve with my libraries is to kind of make things that I have difficulty easier, I, I started taking a stab at writing a library to make it really easy to do basic CRUD stuff like I've just shown. Um, I didn't have time to actually get it to a place where I could show it off, so I left it out of my talk, but um, the idea is that, uh, if anyone has ideas of what they want, um, I, was, I was looking at alternative things like the Django um, admin page. So I'd like features like that, but I don't really know what's important to people, otherwise I'll just implement what I care about and not what everyone else wants. But the plan is that um, if, if I, I want to be able to support more databases than just some SQL ones, because I, I use ReThinkDB a lot in my own projects, so I want to be able to support that, but I want to be able to use Postgres and whatever as well. So I wrote a protocol that just kind of abstracts that a little bit for CRUD, so you can make it support any database by implementing that. Um, I also want that the whole thing is, is, is I want it to be very data-driven. I want to be able to tell you that um, I don't know, I want to be able to give you a schema and a few kind of bits of information about my, um, you know, ab about the resources that I want operations on, and I want it to connect it all up and, and connect it up to the database and just do it. Um, I do want to be able to specify my own routes, though, so that I can embed it inside another API under a certain um, URL. So that's, that's kind of where I'm going with it, but it's very early, but a uh, good time if you have feature requests. Um, and that's basically it. So if you have any questions or comments, shoot. Um, you can, but shouldn't really. I mean, it's set up so that you can you can transform it, you can modify it. You can say, I want to duplicate, I want to clone stuff for a list. I want to change this attribute. I want to change the content. And I haven't quite figured out the full set of features I want in it just yet. Um, 
I just kind of did the basic stuff to get me started. Um, well, well, I mean, I'm sure there's use cases where you can't really get around it, right? And I kind of cheated a little bit because the, where is the boat? Oops. Because here, for example, I transformed my data before passing it in to make me not need to put logic into the template. Um, so I, I added the URL field so I can just refer to it directly instead of having to you know, create it in the template. Um, I, I don't like logic in templates because, at least in my experience, it always starts off really great and then you know, a year down the line uh, it, it gets messy. So I, I like to kind of force you not to. But having said that, I'm sure there is use cases where you might want to or need to. So I, I am kind of thinking about what is the command set for the transformations. I am thinking of things like conditional content setting, for example. Um, if you want to go beyond that, though, I... So at the moment, the, the, the main part of the API is to compile a template given the, given the hiccup and the transformations. What I don't show here is you can actually pass in your own set of, uh, your own map, mapping like clone for to a function. So you can actually pass in your own functions. So you can theoretically do whatever you want with that. Um, what I am using that for is a template can run both in Clojure and Clojure script. And I am also running another companion, writing another companion library for to create, uh, to render a template as you know, ohm specific and reagent specific templates and so on for performance. So that's quite early stages. It's a bit buggy, but it'll get there. Um, the other thing that I haven't mentioned that you can do is you can pre-compile a template, um, which just transforms the, the selectors to directly look into the uh, template, which makes this step faster. So for example, you could pre-compile it, start in a database and then serve it to the clients and have it rendered on the client without having to do a lot of transformations on the client. Um, but yeah. Yeah, I, pref I prefer it being transformations, but you can drop down and add in your own transformations to do whatever you want if you need, basically. You didn't need to generate anything else? No, I did not. Um, these were out here only because it was quick and easy not to, I didn't want to complicate it. And I, yeah, there was no real reason for it actually. Yep. I'm just like, I don't read out the map or there's like a lot of company that I'm, if you want to, for example, this kind of code get, you want to do both templates and the uh, API, both how would you, would you do another same method to read out and dash API, different function? Sorry. If, if you want, your, your question is so if you want to have an API as well as a website yeah. and you don't want to duplicate yeah. work. Um, the simplest, I think, is if you use something like Liberator or, or Yada, instead of writing it by hand, it, it lets you do content negotiation and various things like that. So you could probably do that and then you just tell it, I don't want HTML, I want JSON or whatever. Um, if you want to do it in this code, um, the simplest thing I think would be, like I said, I'm returning the response map manually. There, uh, so this one here. But if I used ring middleware to do it for me, then this function would actually just return the data, right? Well, as HTML, but you could easily put in a parameter or something saying maybe true content negotiation, saying you don't want it in HTML so you could get the data in some other form. Um, I'd probably do that. I'd probably factor out the HTML part from the data part and then you can call them separately. Okay.